All right, so this is week two, creating a learning environment in EDTE 4200. And uh, for the reading and exploring, you have the five ways to make your classroom student-centered, and then this uh, I, Nicole uh, article. Both of the articles are gonna be referenced, or you're gonna use both of the articles uh, when you do the discussion board in Blackboard this week. And then down here you have Schoology that you can explore on your own. It's worth points as well as in Moto. Those are worth points on your tech quest. And uh, again, please complete the discussion in Blackboard this week. Uh, some of the big pieces that are coming, I uh, just want you to make sure you watch the lecture, the one that you're watching right now. You're going to post the link to your website and tech quest in a, in a Google Sheet that I will be sharing with you or that's gonna be available here in Blackboard underneath the presentation. Uh, you're gonna read the assigned articles, respond in the discussion board, and then uh, work on your own pace towards the tech quest. Remember that you should have about 25, 30 points a week. And the instructions and video tutorials for all of these activities are in the following slides. Now, uh, we're talking about learning environment, and typically, um, even though this is an old black and white picture, this is kind of the ideal that uh, that people still imagine, or that people, so many people tend to imagine, is taking place in a class. You know, you want kids to sit down, you want kids to be uh, orderly, and you want kids all fit sitting there facing forward. And uh, and the truth is, is that that's not that's not really what teaching is, or that's not what teaching is. It's kind of more uh, standing and lecturing. But uh, I'm going to share with you some uh, I'm going to share with you some experiences that I've had that, that really changed how I uh, perceive a learning environment and what a learning environment can be. So the following videos are created in the same eighth grade science class by students at different levels using different tools working on the same subject. Uh, one of the students was a language learner. One of the students was a seventh grader who moved up at the middle of the year and was interested in programming. And the last was a GATE student who eventually graduated in 11th grade and was accepted to UCLA at the age of 17. So we have a big range of uh, a big range here between uh, the learners uh, and what they could do, but uh, but they were all successful in the class, and uh, and it's these experiences that uh, that really changed my life. So this one here is by a language learner, and this student had been in the U.S. for less than a year, but he enjoyed demonstrating his science and knowledge through making a Prezi and a blog. I'm not gonna click on the presentation. I really want you to, to click on it and watch it though. Um, the, the boy, he, he, he spoke limited English, but he breaks down to you exactly how he's making his presentations, uh, how he translates them in Google, and, uh, and, it's, and it's really powerful. I, uh, I'm, also gonna, uh, I'm also gonna ask you to, to reference uh, these videos in the, in the discussion on Blackboard. Uh, this here is another video by uh, by a student uh, in the same class uh, who was who who got into programming. So whereas my language learner was into making presentations and uh, into making or uh, into blogging, this student here he was also into blogging, but he started doing programming and creating projects that he could turn in for our science and our history class. Uh, it was a uh, it was it was it was great watching this boy because he was the he was the only student that I had at the time who got really who got into programming, and uh, and it was impressive watching how far he was coming, uh, largely by teaching himself and through his own interest. And then finally, this one here, uh, I I really want you to watch this one. This one is a <laughs> this is a great piece of work here. It's almost a it's like Hollywood Hollywood quality. Uh, how how great this kid did his. <laughs> His, his video and the, the science, the science is, is, it's up there. But like I said, this is a student who, uh, who graduated at, at the age of 17 and, and went on to, to UCLA, but all three of those kids were in the same class and coming in and watching all three of them in the same class for me was a joy because it wasn't just them, but there was many other students in the class or all the students in the class had the opportunity to work on diverse areas. And, and when you came in, the learning environment was unique because you would see some kids sitting on the ground, some kids uh, standing in the back at tables, working on projects. I had a group of kids who were making a digital, uh, like a little video game uh, on, on some old computers that we had uh, in, in the classroom as well. So it, it was cool to watch. It wasn't, it wasn't the sitting in the rows, everybody, uh, you know, taking notes. It was, it was something different and it was something special. And, uh, and, 
And w- when I got to this point in the class, I, I had felt um, I, I had felt like I'd really come uh, to my own as teaching and, and really understanding what what the learning environment could be for kids. Uh, with that same group, uh, we were able to do a science fair. The, the science fair was 100 um, percent student centered. So throughout the year, uh, throughout the year, you know, they're blogging, they're making animations, they're making videos, and then they're doing hands-on science experiments. And what you see here is the kids actually, uh, they were set up in five-minute stations where they had to teach, and uh, they had to teach other kids uh, that we had bust in how, how to go through the experiment. And, uh, and every, every station was based on a question that, they, that, that eventually they were going to have to be able to answer in a test. So it was, it was a cool way to, uh, to kind of get kids prepped for a test, to make it hands-on in addition to, uh, to the videos, to the animation, to the 3D, to the programming, to the blogging that they were doing with science. Um, then uh, you don't have to watch this one, but uh, if, you go, if, you sc- if you go through it, there's a lot of great uh, uh, science-based videos that kids made. And this was our science film festival. So, so again, the the the, th- the things that we did with uh, with this science class were um, it was it was something special, and it was it was a great year for science. But I, I want you to uh, to really uh, consider again what wh- how this affects the learning environment. How does it affect the learning environment when your student can come in and choose between animation, blogging, programming, three D modeling? Um, and then, uh, and then also gets to do hands-on science experiments. And then on top of that, uh, gets to do a film festival based on the same topics that they used in science. You know, that's the type of learning environment that, uh, that we would want for ourselves. And it's the type of learning environment that we should be pushing for our students. I don't have the original pictures from that science or film festival, but it was something similar to this, uh, this is a, a separate film festival that we did at Kern Middle School here in Bakersfield, and uh, we put up a uh, uh, we put up the you know the little selfie wall. We had kids walking the red carpet. We had um, uh, we had them getting interviewed. It was uh, it was cool stuff. So again, um, really break through the mold of thinking what is the learning environment. The learning environment is not necessarily just the classroom. The learning environment is all the events and celebrations that we can do around the learning. It's not just a pencil and a paper. It's not just a computer and a spreadsheet or a computer and a document. It could be a computer and 3D models, a computer and programming. So, so much things and so many ways that a student can demonstrate their learning. So thanks. If you have any questions, uh, you can find me on Twitter. Uh, You can also email me at gonzalezherito at gmail.com. And everything you need for this week will be found here in the presentation. Uh, In the next, uh, in in attached to this presentation also, I'm going to have a a tutorial that you can watch if you need help uh, getting some points. I'm going to be making a playlist on uh, some of the work that my kids are doing in math. So again, thank you very much, and I I hope you all have a great, great week.